Hello. With this video, I'm going to tell you what becomes of the anthropic emissions of CO2 released by man ever since the beginning of the industrial era, mid-18th century. The black curve on this graph shows you the total quantity of carbon dioxide released into the atmosphere, which uh, matches the uh, fossil emissions and also partly emissions due to deforestation and the change in land use. Now, for the last decade, we have released 10 billion tons of carbon per year, also referred to as 10 petagrams. Ever since the beginning of the 60s, it has been possible to measure in the atmosphere CO2 concentrations and the increase thereof over time. So we can calculate the quantity of CO2 accumulating in the atmosphere, which uh, corresponds to the blue curve, the uh, growth rate observed. Apparently, this is about half of the carbon emissions uh, due to human activity, which means that the uh, land and oceanic uh, ecosystems are absorbing about half of the CO2 emissions due to man activity. We will now try and understand the mechanisms connected with the carbon sinks. Start with the ocean. The, mid, the curve in the middle of the uh, slide shows the uh, evolution over the last millennium of CO2 concentrations. During the pre-industrial era, era, the exchanges between the atmosphere and the ocean were two opposing flows with CO2 being dissolved in the ocean, but the quantity was proportional to the CO2 being uh, released into the atmosphere. Now, once the CO2 is dissolved in the ocean, it reacts with the carbonate uh, ions in the ocean to form bicarbonate, and uh, we therefore have a reserve accumulating in the ocean in direct connection with what is called the biological pump, carbon being absorbed by living organisms and controlled by the oceanic mixing. During the anthropic area, CO2 concentrations increase in the atmosphere, and therefore the flow of carbon going, CO2 going into the ocean has increased, whereas the compensating flow from the ocean into the atmosphere also increased, but not so quickly due to the fact that CO2 in the atmosphere was also increasing, and therefore the unbalance explains why oceans behave like a net sink of CO2 versus our anthropic uh, intervention. Different uh, tracers have been measured in the ocean to assess and estimate the total quantity of CO2 absorbed by the ocean over the whole water column. For 2010, the oceans have absorbed 150 petagrams of carbon ever since the beginning of the industrial area, but there are obviously huge variations in favor of areas where water is very deep, such as in the North Atlantic, and therefore a lot of CO2 was stored, expressed here in moles per square meter. But there are also areas uh, where CO2 comes from the deep water, and there is less carbon being stored. And more recent measures have shown that the sink increases notably between the 90s and 2010. For the biosphere, a similar phenomenon is called the fertilizing effect of CO atmospheric CO2. Take the uh, photosynthesis principle. Plants use CO2 to uh, fixate the carbon, and atmospheric CO2 is therefore a substrate in limited quantities. Increasing CO2 in the atmosphere allows to increase carbon assimilation. Tests have been conducted on different ecosystems. The FACE experiments, where CO2 uh, concentration was doubled versus uh, control plots, showing a net increase in the primary productivity of the ecosystems between 20 and 40 percent, according to the ecosystem, with saturation happening over time. 
The effect is therefore combined with other effects for the continental biosphere, the impact of uh, climate changes, the increased temperature on the Earth's surface, or the change in the way rain is distributed, has an direct impact on photosynthesis, but also on carbon degradation when carbon is being stored in the soil, the organic matter in the soil. Also, because of human activities, ecosystems are managed in a different way. Sometimes ecosystems are managed in a very extensive way, sometimes a very intensive way. And in intensive way, there is a short rotation copies being used this influences the net storage of carbon and the availability of nutrients other than carbon, for instance, nitrogen deposition connected with the industrial activity since the beginning of the industrial era. The map here shows you where nitrogen has been deposited and stored with a fertilizing effect. According to a number of estimates, ever since the beginning of the industrial era, 150 petagrams of carbon were stored additionally by land ecosystems, especially forests. Variations, both time and space temp variations of this sink are uncertain and researchers are working in this field. For land ecosystems, notably, a similar flow, a simultaneous flow due to deforestation also released into the atmosphere a similar quantity of carbon, approximately another 150 petagrams of carbon. Therefore, if we want to uh, review the situation, the upper part of the graph shows you fossil fuel combustion emissions and emissions due to deforestation versus the lower part of the graph, which shows what becomes of the carbon in the atmosphere. Atmospheric measurements have allowed to uh, quantify the quantity of carbon stored, 4 billion tons of carbon per year. This quantity varies a lot from one year to the next and increases over time. Measurements made in the ocean have also allowed to quantify the quantity of carbon absorbed and stored in the ocean, the anthropic carbon being absorbed by the ocean. Variability is much lower over time, and as I have explained earlier, when I told you about the previous mechanisms, this quantity of uh, carbon stored increases in time. We therefore were able to calculate the difference and come up with the uh, total amount of CO2 stored in the atmosphere, which changes uh, from one year to another. This is the uh, global situation with an ocean sink 2.6 plus or minus 0.5 uh, billion of uh, tons of carbon per year over the last decade, and variability, time variability controls the storage over years. We also see the impact of the uh, small scale structures such as vortexes, and vortexes are being researched into because we don't really understand their impact, and also the uh, impact of the uh, ocean water warming on the biological pump. For the land biosphere, the challenge here is to quantify the relative importance of the various mechanisms that contribute to carbon storage for the various systems better understanding the future of uh, stored carbon in the Arctic permafrost, understanding the uh, impact of climate extremes on uh, carbon storage, and better quantify lateral flows of carbon between uh, the land and the ocean reservoir.